Over the past four seasons, senior Abby Shu has become the heart and soul of Columbia women's basketball. Today, she steps onto Schiller Court at Levy and Gym for her final regular season home game in front of a sellout crowd with a chance to help lead her Lions back to the top of the Ivy League standing. But in the way stands a top 25 Princeton team, led by defending Ivy League Player of the Year, Caitlin Chen. History and bragging rights on the line in the Battle of the Hudson as Columbia hosts Princeton next on ESPN+. And it's a sellout crowd here inside Levy and Gymnasium. Part two of the rivalry between Princeton and Columbia as the Tigers come in as the 25th ranked team in the country. So glad you could join us alongside Marin Walseth. I'm Lance Meadow. Well, Marin, we don't have to struggle to set the stage for this one. Let's see, Princeton has won 15 in a row. Columbia is running a 12-game home winning streak. They met already last month in a game that went down to the wire in the fourth quarter. Megan Griffith earlier this week said, this game is all about the stars. Marn, fill in the blank, because I don't know if I missed anything. You did not miss anything, except the fact that this is going to be an electric crowd. And in this game, every shot, every pass, every rebound, every steal, they're all going to matter. And then you add the emotion of senior day and the fact that the Tigers are 20 and three with those three losses all coming away from Jadwin Gymnasium. So how about we add the icing on the cake, Marn, and that is the standings. These are the top two teams, Princeton unbeaten, 10 and 0, Columbia right behind at nine and one. Both of these teams shared the Ivy League regular season title last season as Princeton ultimately was victorious in Ivy Madness. What also makes this game so appealing, Marn, it's a matchup between two of the best players in the league. The reigning Ivy League player of the year in Caitlin Chen, and on the opposite side, Abby Shu, who's looking to claim that title. Those two are the queens of their respective programs. Caitlin Chen is coming off a 17 and 10 performance. I think she's really great at getting in the paint, but Lance, She's shooting a career-high 37% from deep. And when you talk about deep, it's Abby Shu. Now, she's looking to break the 2,000-point milestone today. But this year's version of Abby Shu, she's really embraced the rebounding and the defensive side of the ball as well. They have filled Levy and Jim to capacity here in New York City as we are nearing tip-off between Columbia and Princeton. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. Susie Raffu making her seventh consecutive start. Had a career high 12 points in the win at Harvard last Sunday. Sky Belker, standout freshman for the Tigers, ported a season high 21 points in the win over Columbia earlier this season. Columbia with a turnover. Henderson up ahead to Collins, and the Lions strike first. And it's already deafening in here, Lance. The first defensive possession results in a steal for Columbia. And that is the one thing that Megan Griffith emphasized. They have to be better with ball security compared to the first matchup. Belker could not finish at the rim. Collins the rebound. And the Lions again off to the races. Fliss will look to reset with 20 on the shot clock. Columbia 0-12 all-time against teams ranked in the top 25. And Cecilia Collins has all four of Columbia's points. Princeton is known for their defense. A four-point deficit clearly is not going to stifle them, but they do need to communicate better on the defensive end. Princeton giving up just 56 points per game. Second in the Ivy League, 28th in the nation. Chen pulls up from the baseline and delivers as Princeton is on the board. At 5'9", she's not the tallest guard on the floor, but that high arc allows her to shoot over many taller defenders. Chen had 11 points in the first matchup between these teams. She was 5 of 10 from the field, just didn't put up her typical scoring load. As the starters did score 76 of the 80 points, just four points from the bench. Fliss Henderson, seven on the shot clock, in no women's land, can't get it to roll her way. Her sister dives on the ball, called for a travel, and it heads back to the Tigers. Fliss Henderson needs to get to the paint and have a plan. And if the plan does not include shooting the basketball quickly, it's using her pivots and being able to kick out for that inside out three that Megan Griffith likes. Lions showcasing full court pressure. And that's the benefit of a player like Belker. She can take over point guard duties and alleviate Chen. Yeah. 
Weke setting the screen for Belker. Out to St. Rose, who also had 21 in the first matchup. In and out. Mitchell trying for the loose ball. Noweke dives on it. And we're gonna get contact underneath down on the baseline. As both teams were hustling for the loose ball, they're gonna get Kitty Henderson with her first. Ellie Mitchell for Princeton is a fin phenomenal rebounder, averaging almost four offensive rebounds a game. I get why two people box her out, but that leaves somebody open, resulting in this second opportunity for the Tigers. And Marin, that 16th best in the nation is St. Rose skims the rim. And the Lions once again looking to push. Dangerous pass. Shu somehow gets it, lays it in, plus the foul as Columbia setting the tone early. Transitioning from defense to offense, it really starts with the first three steps of the possession. And here we're seeing how Abby Shu's able to catch in stride because of a, of a phenomenal pass by Kitty Henderson. St. Rose picking up the personal, her first shoot to the line where she shoots 74%. Mareke and Rafu fighting for the loose ball. And it's going to head the opposite way. As Rafu a little over aggressive there, picking up her first. Lance, I wonder if some of that, both at uh, Kitty Henderson on the far end and, and here, Susie Rafu, some of the emotion that comes with the moment, a little too aggressive. Noweke was inserted into the starting lineup, Marin, right when these two teams met in January. And we spoke with Carla Barubi, who said she earned it at her length. And her tenacity on defense was a big reason why as Ellie Mitchell grabs the offensive board. Belker from the corner, and Fliss there to grab the loose ball. Lost it, shoe in the right place at the right time, and we're gonna get a blocking foul on St. Rose, and Barubi is irate. Barubi's irate. Griffith is excited. The two coaches here are having just as much emotion as the, the 10 players on the court, but that's the ball security. Right, Fliss Henderson was able to get that rebound, but stumbled a little bit, shoveled it to Abby Shu, who stumbled a little bit, shoveled it up to CC Collins. And one of the things Carla Baruri emphasized is Kitty Henderson with the one-handed scoop. Rafu the offensive rebound, loose ball tapped around, Rafu still battling, and Columbia's in business. They play catch on the post. And it's going to be last touched by Rafu. Outstanding defense by Mitchell as Princeton makes a change with Ashley Chia entering for the first time. St. Rose goes to the bench. Nobody likes that foul here at Levy and Gymnasium. But Ellie Mitchell is co-defensive player of the reigning player of the year because she's savvy. She knows the scout. She knows where Susie Rafu is going to come. And she drew that foul. Shared that honor with Nyla McGill of Yale last season. Mitchell actually looking for the third straight season winning that award. Chia off the mark. And as Mitchell was boxing out, we're going to get more contact underneath. And another one against Rafu. That'll be her second. So Megan Griffith immediately going to the bench. Perry Page comes in. Rafu takes a seat. And that's tough for Columbia. Perry Page has been a starter, carries great minutes, certainly is capable of doing the job but you're seeing just how active and relentless Ellie Mitchell is. And Caitlin Chen has her second bucket. She has accounted for all four of Princeton's points. Lions slowing things down with 18 on the shot clock. Kitty off the dribble. Mitchell another rebound. Great help defense there by Princeton. Katie Henderson was wise and smart to put up a floater. She usually likes to use the glass there, but the help defender was there to take the charge. Shen off the dribble, the fadeaway. Rebounded by Noeke. Princeton outstanding on the offensive glass. No foul. Collins comes out of the group, and she's running the track inside to Page as Columbia once again orchestrates the fast break. And it starts with... CC Collins, her ability to avoid take, getting taken that charge and deliver a perfect pass. Chia leaves it for Belker, the pair of freshmen going to work, and Belker rewarded with her first basket. Belker at 21 in the first matchup. You mentioned Caitlin Chen wasn't as aggressive, had some foul trouble in game one, and Sky Belker really picked up for Chen. Well, Collins is picking up for everybody, apparently, for Columbia. 
as Collins is up to six. This is her first taste of this rivalry here in New York City. And she joined the team from Bucknell. Belker goes inside to Mitchell, immediately draws the double. Collins able to pick the pocket up ahead to Shu. Shu wisely slows things down. Collins unleashes the three, and she probably wants that one back. And with that, timeout on the floor. Both teams could go back to their respective corners, including Cecilia Collins finding the bottom of the net in the early goings of this one. Abby, I'm so proud of you. I love how hard you've worked to not only be a great player, but to bring a championship culture to Columbia. Thank you for the joy you've brought the Columbia family with your electric shooting and your all around excellence every time you step on the floor. I appreciate you making my name relevant again with every shot scored inching closer to my record and now you've finally broken it. So that was Camille Zimmerman addressing Abby Shu, who was honored on senior day before the game as Abby is the all-time leading scorer in Columbia basketball history. We spoke to Megan Griffith on multiple occasions this season, Mar, and every time Abby and Camille came up in the conversation, she said those are the two most humble players that she has ever interacted with. And they have a great relationship with each other, and that's on both of them, led by Megan Griffith, to bring the two together. Columbia with eight points in the paint of their 10. And speaking of the paint, Cecilia Collins drawing an offensive foul against the Tigers. Parker Hill, who just came in, will pick up her first. Hill, the junior out of Bethesda, Maryland will make up the front line with Mitchell. Gia Chen and Belka round out their five on defense. Nicole Stevens in for the first time for Columbia. Tries to thread the needle and Mitchell gets down and dirty. As soon as the basketball gets to the paint for Columbia, Princeton does a great job of clogging it up. Princeton shooting just 27% from the field. There's a team coming in shooting 46%. Mitchell point blank range, and she gets on the board for the first time to complement her three rebounds. So we're seeing Columbia double the post, regardless of who gets the basketball, they double the post immediately, and that time Ellie Mitchell dove to the front rim, which is exactly what you're taught to do. And then Belker gets her hands in the passing lane, leads to a jump ball, possession arrow will stay on this side. Both teams have combined for seven turnovers. They've scored six points off of those mishaps. Kitty to inbound with 20 on the shot clock. Collins is at the hot hand. She has six. Shen picking her up on the switch. Collins backing her way down. And a strong rebound by Parker Hill. Shia goes down low to him. Calling for the clear out. Mitchell. Almost got stuck in a turnover situation. But Chen will reset here with 10 on the shot clock. Shia with eight, the pull-up jumper. Grabs her own miss and draws the contact against Columbia as once again Princeton crashing the offensive glass. You see the help on the baseline drive. You gotta give a lot of credit to Caitlin Chen, the smallest person there. I'm sorry, Ashley Chia, the smallest person in there, coming down with the rebound. Collins picks up her first personal. She heads to the bench. Fliss nearly steals it from Hill. Hill working on Henderson. Mitchell left all alone, too hard off the glass as she missed on the bunny. Princeton shooting 29% for the field. The Lions, though, on a scoring drought of nearly two and a half. Kitty off the dribble. Spots up Stevens from the corner. And Mitchell with her fifth rebound. Ellie Mitchell is responsible for 20% of Princeton's rebounds this season. Fliss knocks the ball away and takes it the opposite way. Down low to her sister. And something tells me those two know a thing or two about chemistry. They've done that before, but you have to give Fliss, the freshman, credit for having her eyes up to even see her sister open. 
So that's now four points off five Princeton turnovers. Shia off the crossover. Dumps it down low to Mitchell. Wide open is Chen. And it was last touched by Hill. It will head back to Columbia. It starts with a steal by Fliss Henderson. Eyes are up the entire time, surveying. Finds her sister for an easy lay-in. Columbia already has five assists on six made field goals. Not a surprise considering the Lions lead the Ivy League with 17 a game. They're trying to get it inside to shoot. And a difficult shot for Abby goes down with Pelker all over. The mismatches. That's something that head coach Megan Griffith has talked to us over the course of the season, how being able to locate and then get the ball to the mismatch, clearly they're trying to post up Abby Shue. So Abby's now seven away from 2,000. Page knocks the ball loose, dangerous pass. Shia intercepts it and lays it in. Nobody getting breathing room in this game. I'm really impressed with Ashley Chia and just how explosive and confident she is as a first year player. Freshman out of Montebello, California, shooting a team best 39% from beyond the arc. Shu for three, ring it up. Abby Shu gaining rhythm. She's got seven and has not missed a shot. Princeton once again working it inside. They kick it out to Chen, finds an alley, cannot capitalize. And Riley Weiss will now take over. In for the first time with Fliss Henderson, Stevens, Page, and Shu. Columbia looking here to hold for almost the last shot. About a nine second differential moment between game clock and shot. So they will need to get back in transition defense if this isn't a miss, if this isn't a make or on the miss. Stevens floats it over to Page, who lays it in with the left. Harry Page providing a lift off the bench. And Princeton now can hold for the final shot. Chen double, down low to Nowecki. And she gets it to roll, plus the foul. Textbook half-court offense for the Tigers. And that's two points in the paint for Princeton. We see the great post-up position by Chet Nowecki. She's worked so hard over her career, earned the starting minutes. Big bucket here to end the first quarter for Princeton. But getting the ball in the paint was something that Carla Bar Barubi talked to us about, how important that is today. First foul on Fliss Henderson, team's fifth. Nweke just a 3% free throw shooter. Princeton's first attempt this afternoon. They get it into Shu, beats the double, puts up the prayer from half court, and nearly gets it to go at the buzzer. Close calls all around as the Lions win the battle in the first 10 minutes, taking a 19-13 lead to the bench. Here's another look, Abby with Belker by her side. Can't get the bounce after one. So last week, Columbia went to Harvard on Sunday, and Cecilia Collins, with a milestone of her own, reaching 1,000 career points with that bucket, combined between Bucknell and Columbia, and receiving the ball before today's contest, alongside Megan Griffith, as we look at Cecilia Collins and her breakdown during the course of her three seasons. The art of consistency, Barnes. She certainly is in the art of facial expressions and playing with her emotions on her sleeve. Coach Megan Griffith loves her and says, you know, she's very competitive, but she's not too hard on herself. She can get over a mistake and move on to the next play, which is unique for young people. And how about our production team finding three different facial expressions <laughs> to showcase? Not, I heard it only took them about her. three minutes <laughs> to put together that slide. So we thank Cecilia Collins for doing the heavy lifting. She had the step back jumper, the smooth touch. She's got four. That's not a freshman step back there. Princeton now up to 35% shooting from the field. 
And in the first matchup between these teams, Columbia also set the stage early before Princeton rallied. Long three up and in for Riley Weiss, as that is the second for the Lions. Riley Weiss had 12 points last month against Princeton. Shen now working on the freshman. Dumps it off to the cutting Mitchell, who again cannot finish at the rim. Still fighting for the loose ball. And somehow, Marin, with three players in her vicinity, she clears it out, gives it to Noweke, and it's a five-point game. Being able to be so tough and so strong, yet composed. It really makes no difference how many players you put on her to box her out. It's about pure hustle. Stevens down the lane. Noeke got a piece of it. It will stay with Columbia. The jockeying for position, being able to keep that pivot foot with three Columbia lines coming at you and find a receiver to pass to, not just get rid of it. Weiss with six, the pull-up jumper. And guess who? Ellie Mitchell. Mitchell. Rebound number seven. She had a double-double last month against Columbia. And she comes in averaging nearly 10 a game. First in the Ivy League, 13th in the nation. Difficult shot, and Caitlin Chen absorbs that on the floor as the ball falls through the net. High degree of difficulty, almost acrobatic, but again, that high floater, that high arc allows it to drop in. And that's the thing about Princeton. You blink, they make it a ball game. Shu takes over. She's got seven. Another trifecta. Long rebound to Paige. She'll flip it to Fliss. Weiss loses the ball. Noeke tying her up to force the jump ball. And it will stay with Columbia. We'll have a pair of substitutions as we take another look at Caitlin Chen's bucket. That's good defense by Nicole Stevens and just better offense, quite frankly. Kitty Henderson and Cecilia Collins back in. Kitty goes cross court to Stevens. Finds the opening, but it was swatted away from behind by Chia. That Princeton defense putting down the clamps. Chia, the high arcing three, drops through nothing but net, and we are tied at 22. It's a 7-0 run for the Tigers and a scoring drought of over two minutes for Columbia. Collins, the no-look feed, and Fliss makes it look pretty. Fundamental basketball right there. Fliss Henderson did a great job of flashing right down the lane, right to the front of the rim. Back and forth we go here in New York City. Chia, another tray. Noeke tracks it down, and Princeton is back in business. Tigers with eight offensive boards in this game. Belker taking over with 10. Inside to Mitchell, double across to Noeke, and it's just unfair. Princeton again ties the nine. Perfect offense there, not maybe exactly how Carla Brewery drew it up, but the patience to find the open block player off of the double team. Helping the helper would be talked about for Columbia at halftime. And Mitchell, a very underrated facilitator. She averages two times a game. She's got three already. Off the Stevens miss, here comes Belker. As Princeton has made four of its last five field goal attempts. Mitchell with Collins giving her space. The backdoor cut to Chen. And it was last touch by Kitty. It will stay with Princeton. 10 on the shot clock. As Weiss returns for Columbia. Stevens heads to the bench. Belker will get a breather for Princeton. St. Rose returns. Look at that bounce pass. Back door. And then Caitlin Chen smart enough to not touch it because she knows Kitty Henderson just got her fingertip on it. But here Chen touches it again. It rattles off the ring. Shoe up ahead to Kitty. They leave it for Collins. Matched up on Oweke. Collins, the leaner. And Mitchell had it. 
and it deflected into the hands of Chen. Talk about physicality. Man. Chen Nowaki's on the floor. Katie Henderson trips right over and falls on her face. There's heavy mop duty in this game. Mitchell, the handoff to St. Rose, and just slithers through to get Princeton a two-point inch. That's the attack by St. Rose playing with those two fouls. Columbia has not scored in over two minutes. They've hit one of their last seven field goal attempts. Abby up the baseline. Weiss somehow stays in play. And that was spoken too soon, because now it heads back to Princeton. Time out on the floor. The Tigers have turned the tables here at NYC. The Ivy League on ESPN is brought to you by Athletic Brewing. Athletic Brewing crafts great tasting and award-winning non-alcoholic beers that are fit for all times. Chen Nueke has provided a spark for Princeton. She made her first start against Columbia last month, and Marin, she has been consistent. She scored in double figures the four games prior to the Yale game. She didn't play against Yale because she was sick, but she's been so reliable for Carla Barubi and also can even facilitate. She's put in the time. She loves the gym. She loves film, film work. And you just see the numbers, how when you get a little more confidence, get a little opportunity, frequency, minutes, your numbers are going to rise. And the Noeke family knows this building very well because her older brother Ike suited up for Columbia before finishing his career off at Quinnipiac. Also a front court player as St. Rose leaves it for Mitchell. We approach four and a half minutes to go in the first half. Mitchell on page has the advantage, turns, fires, and Kitty Henderson leapfrogs St. Rose, and then they're going to get a travel on her, so we'll stay with Princeton. St. Rose crashed from the perimeter. I got to believe when you have somebody like Ellie Mitchell who takes the, the post move and then St. Rose comes in, but I got to believe when you have somebody like Ellie Mitchell on your team who's so persistent in crashing the boards, it's like contagious, right? It, you know, she takes the shot and somebody else is going to crash. I've been very impressed with the urgency on the boards for Princeton. Yeah, they want to one-up one another, essentially. <laughs> Chen off the dribble, pulls up, tips it out, and Ellie Mitchell goes from the front court all the way out on the perimeter, as Princeton has nine offensive rebounds and they have scored six second chance points. Inside to the wide open to Weke. There's a reason we highlighted her out of the timeout. Took advantage of the Colombian non-communication. I won't say miscommunication. I don't think there was any. And Chetna Wicke found herself on the ba at the basket. She's got nine points on four or five shooting. Collins puts up the three straight away. She had the rebound. Princeton is on a 6-0 run. It's 13-2 over the last five plus minutes. They have taken the air out of Columbia's offense and Chen cannot finish on the double clutch. The second time short and Columbia clears it out. They have not scored in nearly four minutes. Abby, down low to Collins and you can end that drought. Those two play so well together. Celia Collins can obviously be the star in any possession, but she's a great complimentary player as well. Abby has a pair of assists in this game to go along with her seven points. St. Rose, dazzling move. Mitchell cleans it up. Can't get the roll. Page the rebound. Ellie would probably be in double figures if she made all of these bunny opportunities. Chia with the loose ball, and Princeton on a three-on-three -three break. Chia stops. Fades, and Shu is there for the rebound. So both teams now cooling off. Kitty surveys the field, out wide to Collins. Skims the backboard, and Chen with the rebound, as Princeton is winning the battle on the glass by five. They've also taken care of the basketball better, and that was something that Megan Griffith talked to us about, ball security, silly turnovers. St. Rose trying to get Shu to jump, and it makes no difference as 
she is able to get the better of Columbia's top player. She's got four. I like the pivot, the use of the pivot there by Madison St. Rose. And St. Rose was the Ivy League Rookie of the Year last season. Came on late and has picked up where she left off, even though she has been struggling from the field in the last few games. And off the miss, ball deflected out by Weiss. So we'll head back to Princeton. We'll have substitutions on both ends. Rafiu back in after picking up two early personals. Stevens as well. They'll join Collins, Kitty, and Chu. Princeton now operating with Mitchell, Chen, Belker, Noeke, and St. Rose. Carla Berubi was so complimentary of Sky Belker. Came in with a college body, came in college ready. As Rafu takes it away from St. Rose, and look at Rafu running the break. But gives it back to Chen, it's a foot race to the bucket. Chen stops, pops, and will not be able to lay it in. Hustle by Collins from one end to the other. No easy buckets in this game. Look at this effort by Cecilia Collins. Doesn't come at the body. Comes at the basketball and sacrifices a face plant on the padded wall. So we got another facial expression is what you're saying. <laughs> I, think, I think so. Literally and figuratively speaking. St. Rose off the mark. Collins there. Princeton has made just one of its last eight field goal attempts, but still holding on to a four-point lead with under a minute to go in the first half. Collins dumps it down low to shoot. Sealed off, and Abby somehow is able to get the better of the Princeton defense and draw the foul. Real simple, just backdoor. Those two made eye contact. High off the glass. The foul goes against Mitchell, her first, and the team's first. And Abby to the line where she shoots 74%. And Abby Shu now has 10. She needs one more point for 2,000. Only three other players in Ivy League history have reached that mark. Shen sealed off by Kitty. Mitchell trying to give it back to Caitlin. To the cutting St. Rose. Columbia got a piece of it. And now the Lions get hold for the final shot of the first half with the shot clock off. Columbia's largest lead in this game was nine, 19 to 10. Princeton's largest four. And now in a one point game with 10 seconds to go. Kitty. Dribbling in circles, awkward floater. Rafu there for the offensive board. Fliss, can she get it up? And that is gonna do it. 20 minutes in the books. And each team absorbing one punch after another as Princeton holding on to the one point lead. Barn basketball by default is a game of runs, but this game certainly encompassed that. Back and forth, back and forth, it was Columbia first, then Princeton. We're seeing Chet Nowecki finish that here as Abby Shue's gonna take it in. Finish it by CeCe Collins. Sheehan as the team captain. As for the Columbia Lions, familiar faces, but also some new faces. Your first chance to get to know Abby Shue, who's a freshman. No presence on the Hawks roster from Western Australia as well as from Spain. And that's Lula Roy, the starting point guard from Spain. Inside an offensive board and put back for the freshman Abby Shu out of Parkland, Florida. And Abby is actually the youngest of seven children. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's quite a family. And she ends up here in New York City. And a lot has happened since November 2019, Maren, as we look at the most games played at Levy and Jim. Abby tops that list with 62. And she is one point away from 2000. She has been so consistent for this team every which way. But the other thing that she's been put under the microscope with respect to is big games. 
when moments like this come into play and how much pressure she puts on herself. And here's the latest litmus test, Mark. It's been fun to see her be consistent, but also improve each year. And so now this is the moment where you are at home. This is a big game. And how do you respond? I say the first half, she has responded very well. 10 points on four of five shooting. Cecilia Collins right behind her with eight. Megan Griffith, what we were talking with her earlier in the week, she said, this is a six on six game. This is not about the seventh or eighth players. It's about your stars showing up. Now, we offered that same school of thought to Carla Barubian. She was a little bit more open to the bench chipping it, especially since they only scored four points in the first matchup. But these teams are only going to go, Marin, as far as their primary players take them. And that's because they're starters for a reason. They have the confidence, the experience, and that's where end of February, March games come down to. Coaches don't want to take risks on kids who have not been consistent for any either team on either end of the floor. So you're going to get the kids who put in the work, who display confidence to their coaches, and who can rise to the occasion. Princeton basketball to start the second half. Tigers shot 35% from the field. One of seven from beyond the arc. They go inside to Noeke. She had six points and three rebounds, and Mitchell can't handle it. And that is the eighth turnover of the game. So it's interesting, the first possession, of the half, Columbia does not double the post, yet Chet Nowacki is expecting it. And I don't know that Ellie Mitchell is ready for that pass. Mitchell with 10 rebounds in the first half, her 51st career game with at least 10 boards. Backdoor cut as Kitty finishes it off the feed from Collins. So the seesaw battle ensues, and Columbia moves back in front with Princeton trying to respond. St. Rose around the Mitchell screen. Belker leans in and gets it to roll as any lead is short-lived in this game. Belker up to four after having 21 in the first go-around between these teams. Weke with Collins every step of the way. Henderson puts up the trifecta. St. Rose there for the rebound. Princeton led by as many as four in the first 20 minutes. And there's a Tigers team that had to overcome a deficit against Brown last Friday before hammering Yale, 70 to 25, off the miss. Kitty boxes out Ellie Mitchell for the rebound. Collins has facilitated, trying to score there, loses the ball. It was last touch by the Tigers. Lance, what if Kitty Henderson was as tall as Ellie Mitchell? CeCe Collins here taking, absorbing the contact, taking the hit. Well, to answer your question, if Kitty was as tall as Ellie Mitchell, Something tells me she'd have a few more rebounds, as if she hasn't hustled enough this season. You're absolutely right. I just think they're very similar in, in their aggressiveness. The approach is the same, and Collins' aggressive approach paying off for Columbia, as now she showcases her range. Cecilia's in double figures with 11. Five of 10 from the field. And Collins now has scored in double figures six of the last seven games. Princeton is still using a very balanced attack, looking for the first double-figure score. Shane, through the heart of the Lions' defense, gets it to go. She's up to eight. Collins bounces it to Kitty. Shane catches up with it as Kitty goes right to left. Could not finish. St. Rose the rebound, and now Princeton looking to push. Shane leaves it for St. Rose. Splits the double. 18 on the shot clock. 
Chen trying to get a step on Collins, loses the ball, gets tied up now with Chu, and the jump ball possession arrow will head the opposite way. Turnover number nine for Princeton. Caitlin Chen just gets the ball tipped out by Susie Raffu there, and then smart play on Abby Shu to try to grab the basketball. Younger players try to pick it up and dribble all in one motion. That never goes well or rarely goes well. But Columbia has opportunity here in this half court set offense. But Lance, that last possession for Columbia in the half court was a bit slow. They got a good shot, but it was a bit slow and deliberate. They play better when they play faster. Abby puts up the three. Dear Abby, welcome to the 2000 Point Club. Sincerely, the elite scorers of the Ivy League. So Abby shoes up to 13, and the career milestones continue to pile. Congratulations, Abby. It's been an honor to watch you shoot the ball. Belker pulls up. Kitty the rebound. Kitty off the hesitation. Out to shoot. Here's another good look. Put a little bit too much mustard on that one. Mitchell the rebound, and Princeton with a 4-3 break. Chen stops in the lane and draws the foul. I like the idea on the offensive end for Abby Shu. A shot fake, one dribble pull up. Just as easy for her as that three point shot. But Caitlin Chen here on the offensive end for Princeton, continuing to probe. And now finds herself at the foul line, trying to be the first Tiger to double figures tonight. Chen 77% on the season. Foul went against Kitty Henderson, her second and the team's first here in the third. And Caitlin Chen able to capitalize. So she is now in double figures with 10. And Chen has scored in double figures the last eight games. Highlighted by a double-double against Brown. Nearing the five and a half minute mark here in the third. Abby with a defender in her face. Overshoots that one. Fliss the rebound. Back out to Abby. Here's another good look. And Abby Shu ring it up from downtown. She's got 16. Lance, I can't believe it, but that was the first basket, the first second chance point basket for three for Columbia. And they have seven offensive boards in this game. So that's efficiency, right? That's being able to not just get the basketball on the offensive end, uh, offensive rebounds, but be able to do something with it. You see Fliss keeping her pivot foot. Abby locates herself in the corner. Very smart defensive play there by Ellie Mitchell. You wouldn't expect anything different from the reigning defensive player of the year to contest without fouling. So Susie Raffu picked up her third. Paige Lauder in for the first time. Chia from the corner. Paige hustles towards the loose ball. And the Lions now look to pad their four point cushion. And that's supposed to be your five player. Getting that rebound, controlling. Just brought the ball up the floor a couple times already today. Shu puts up the straightaway jumper. Lauder gets her hands on it and Fliss will reset. Fliss down the lane, bounces it to Lauder. They're gonna wave off the bucket. An offensive foul, Ellie Mitchell sacrificing her body. That's Ellie Mitchell understanding the scouting report, seeing the straight line drive. We take another look. Fliss Henderson absorbing the contact from Ellie Mitchell as Mitchell wins the battle here in New York City. So here's another look at Abby Shu reaching 2,000 career points on this three with Ellie Mitchell getting a hand up. But to no avail, is Abby Shu now the fourth player in Ivy League history to reach 2,000 points. The crowd loving it here inside Levy and Jim. And here are the number two and number three all-time leading scorers, both 
out of Harvard. And Abby has an opportunity to continue to move up the ladder as this season progresses. If I was a betting woman, I'm, I would say, I mean, she's gonna at least get to three, maybe pass Allison Feaster. Some of that depends on how many games she has left in her career. Princeton out of the timeout has not hit a field goal in the last two minutes and 45 seconds. Shia gives it back to St. Rose with 10 on the shot clock. Inside to Hill, Mitchell with seven, tiptoes, Shia puts up the trifecta. Hill gets a piece of it. Mitchell's still fighting for it. And Chen somehow will reset. 19 on the shot clock. Shia from the corner. And a long rebound to Paige Lauder as Princeton has gone ice cold. They've missed their last four field goal attempts. Dangerous pass. And Paige loses it. It went off of the Princeton. It will stay with Columbia. And as Megan Griffith going with Hockey line changes here. Cece Collins really forced that into Susie Raff, uh, to Perry Page. Yes, there was a mismatch, but all five Tigers knew it was a mismatch too. So Kitty Henderson in with Collins, Shu, Page, and Raffi. Shu off the curl. Two of the best Ivy League players teeing up one another. 10 on the shot clock. Chen stops it. They go back to Shu with five. Chen all up in her grill. The fadeaway jumper. Are you kidding me? Abby Shu is up to 18, and it's a six point lead. And then back on the other end, Ellie Mitchell fouled as she got deep down low in the paint. Perry Page had no option. That'll be her first. Elliot Mitchell ran in transition and did exactly what forwards are taught to do, head underneath the rim and bury that defender. Princeton has it scored in two and a half minutes. Shen, the pull-up runner, short. Mitchell through three defenders again. Grabs the offensive board and then a foul on Susie Raffu, and that is going to be her fourth. And Columbia's fifth, which is going to put Ellie Mitchell here at the foul line. Princeton is three for three from the line today. Mitchell only a 51% free throw shooter. Opportunity to cut into the deficit here. And in a close game like this, this is where limited free throw opportunities add up. Columbia has only attempted two free throws in this game. Mitchell trying to salvage it, and she does so. Shu off the curl, gets the pass, and then draws the foul. So Abby will head to the line as they're going to get Parker Hill with her second, team second. Abby comes off of this Nicole Stevens screen and curls because her defender gets caught on the screen. Sky Bell calls for help late, which forces Parker Hill into a fouling situation. And Abby gets it to bounce her way. She's responsible for all three attempts for Columbia this afternoon. Two of three. An efficient performance, seven of 11 from the field. For now, 20 points. So Abby has scored 20 or more points in 15 of the team's 24 games this season. And Princeton now looking for an answer. Belker. Off the hesitation, knocks down Princeton's first field goal in nearly four and a half minutes. Carla Barubi looking to energize her defense after that much needed bucket. Abby gives it back to Collins. Belker all over, and it makes no difference. 
Cecilia Collins is up to 14, and that's her second three. Hill goes up strongly, she draws the foul, and back to the free throw line we go. You see the winning mentality, the winning attitude that Princeton has. Yes, they get caught in a ball screen, flare screen, made three at one end. Parker Hill, head up, rim run. Caitlin Chen delivers the pass. There's no hanging in their heads. There's no conversation about whose fault was that. It's next play. Perry Page talking things over with Megan Griffith. Foul was on Collins, her second. Hill, 71% from the line this season. Junior out of Bethesda, Maryland. Did not attempt a shot in only three minutes of play against Columbia last month. She's played five minutes thus far today. And those are her first two points at the line. So she'll now head to the bench. Chet Nowicki back in. Solid rotation minutes there for Parker Hill. Two minutes to go here in the third. Collins leaves it for Stevens off the dribble. Mitchell swarming her, and Stevens gets around her, but cannot finish at the rim. So Princeton dodged the bullet on that one, and the Tigers off a defensive stop, looking to get their offense back on track. St. Rose pulls up on Shu. Henderson there for the rebound. Kitty has grabbed eight boards in this game. And now she puts up the three and dials up long range. And Megan Griffith coming out on the court to let her hear about it. Inside to Noweke, adjusts in the air and draws the foul. So Noweke will have an opportunity to head to the line as that is going to be the third on Collins. So Paige will come back in. Collins takes a seat. Kitty Henderson goes for the steal, but CeCe Collins is late on that help side. As the help side defender, you're evaluating the offensive player in your teammate. Kitty Henderson's going to be outplayed on the block nine times out of ten. And not by lack of physicality or trying, but sheer size in this setup. Noweke, two for two from the line today. And she stays perfect, despite the fact that she is only 53% on the season. So a seven point game, Columbia, in this contest, has led by as many as nine. Nicole Stevens milking some clock with eight on the shot clock. Weke not giving her breathing room. Shu gets it off and is fouled with one on the shot clock. And Ellie Mitchell is arguing her case. Did not understand how they blew the whistle on that one. And she is extremely frustrated walking back to her bench. Here's another look. And it looked from that angle, Mark, she reached over with her left hand. Hard to see, though, did she get all ball or was there a piece of the hand? And she's still having a respectful but emotional conversation with Pastor Torres, the referee. It's the second on Mitchell. And you send Abby shoot to the line for three. Five of six. And she now has a new career high against Princeton with 22 points. She scored 21 last month. That was her initial career high. And it's the third quarter. Let's not forget that part. It's called a teaser, Mari. We don't want to give it all away. <laughs> we want to make sure people come back for the fourth quarter. Ten point game. Princeton in need of a bucket has made just one of its last seven. Can Chen rescue the troops? And there she draws the foul. So Caitlin Chen will go to the line where she is two for two today. You're seeing the senior, the composure here. Two feet, jump stop. 
Uses that head and shoulder fake to get Perry Page in the air. Page is second as Carla Barubi looks on. This is not uncharted territory for this Princeton team. They have face deficits, including a sluggish game against Brown Marne. And we talked to Carla Barubi about that game, and it was the latest test, but there's something about this Tigers team. They know how to turn it up a notch more often than not in the fourth quarter. Caitlin Chen cutting it back to single digits. And she said that Brown game gave them not, you know, she didn't say a wake-up call, I'll say the wake-up call, but close games that maybe you don't expect to be as close or close moments, dial players' attention back in. Lions can hold for the final shot here in the third. Big shooting disparity on the game, 47% for the Lions from the field. Princeton, 34%. Collins trying to give it up here with five. Kitty, the contested tray, air ball. And that will expire the clock here in the third quarter. It is Columbia entering the final stanza up by eight as Abby Shu has once again put together a dazzling performance, also facilitating Collins with the three, and then Abby adding to that tally in an eight-point lead. The Ivy League on ESPN is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, real magic. There's magic when we cheer together. Well, the stars have shown up for Columbia today. Abby Shu leading the way with 23, Cecilia Collins 14, and Kitty Anderson doing a little bit of everything. And that supports what Megan Griffith was preaching. It's all about the star players. So here we go, entering the fourth. This is a Princeton team that has won 24 consecutive Ivy League games, including the tourney. They're running a 15-game winning streak. They have won 28 of the last 29 against Columbia, 14 straight here in New York City. And they trail by eight with 10 minutes to go. Mitchell facing up on Fliss, powers her way through and delivers. Ellie Mitchell with her second make, and it's now a six-point game. I understand Columbia wants to get the shots that they want, not what Princeton dictates. But half court slow down is not Columbia's style. They go inside to Fliss, working on Oweke, has nowhere to go. Mitchell comes over to double, Stevens just loses it. And it will give it back to Princeton, turnover number 11. is picking up, just a token pressure. Wanting Princeton, obviously, to have to think the entire 94 feet. Belker feeds it inside to Mitchell, another Miss Bunny, and Fliss is there for the rebound. She has had good look after good look and unfriendly rims here at Levy. Columbia now looking to capitalize off what would have made this a four-point game. Fliss off the dribble, pushes off, no foul, and they'll count that floater as she got the better of St. Rose. Fliss Henderson does so much, and scoring is not what she's asked to do a ton of, and head coach Megan Griffith has told us she's asking her to be more of a, a scoring threat. Think about scoring especially when she gets the fourth or fifth defender on the opposing team. Shen underneath the bucket and a crafty maneuver to give her 14. But she had the same progression and same conversations over her sister Kitty Henderson's early parts of her career. So you can see that Fliss will be a scorer in time. Kitty caught underneath and they're gonna get Shen on the region. 
So that's number one on Chen, and the team's first. You see Kitty Henderson here, Henderson here posting up the entire paint. No one comes to help her double. She has time to maneuver, use her strength to maneuver Caitlin Chen. Kitty has not attempted a free throw today. She comes in on the season 56%. Columbia is now seven of eight from the line. And that has been a problematic area at times this season. And right on cue, she misses the second. Belker has been quiet with six points. Just Princeton looking for somebody to ignite this offense. Shen off the dribble, hesitated. Noweke off the deflection, too far underneath the bucket. She got deflected by her own rim. Kitty left all alone and makes Princeton pick. Kitty Henderson with her second three, the third Lion in double figures, as she has 11. And both of Kitty Henderson's three have come off ball screens that Caitlin Chen has gone underneath. Now the scouting report needs to change. Chen now trying to return the favor. Stevens the steal. Columbia with a 10-point advantage. Out to Stevens, wide open look. Noweke crashes the glass. That's a good shot for Columbia. That's that inside, outside three extra pass that Megan Griffin has told us she's always a fan of. And they've had 18 assists on 22 made field goals in this game. Mitchell left alone by Fliss. Trying to get closer to the bucket. Backdoor cut by Noweke, and she finishes going left to right to bring the deficit back to single digits. Ellie Mitchell gets a lot of credit, as she should, for her defense and for her rebounding, but she's a very good passer. Sees one play ahead, one pass ahead, has the touch on her passes, unique for a, a forward. She has five of her team's 13 assists. 10 on the shot clock for Columbia. Fliss. Spinning with the left hand, floating it in. Fliss Henderson, three or four from the field, back the other way. Noweke gets the baseball pass as she is adding to her tally. She now has 15. So Chen Noweke has now scored in double figures in her last five appearances. Abby with the step back. And it's just unfair. Abby Shu putting on a performance to remember in her final regular season home game. Abby Shu likes that elbow, likes to go back door. Mitchell leans in and banks it in. As finally, she gets into rhythm on the offensive end. Princeton has gotten within eight, but Columbia has always had an answer. Thanks to that young lady, the double clutch doesn't work. Mitchell the rebound, and Princeton picking up the pace. They leave it for St. Rose in the corner, knocks it down, and in the blink of an eye, it's a six-point game. Big time answer by Madison St. Rose, and then another response by Columbia. This is what we expected. Both teams not wasting any time with their offensive attack. Princeton has hit its last four shots. Can St. Rose make it five? Yes, she can. Back-to-back -back trades. St. Rose in double digits with 10. Excellent read there by St. Rose. Nicole Stevens went underneath the screen. St. Rose nearly stole it from Stevens. Belker trying to slow down shoot. It's deflected out of play. It was last touched by Columbia. And with a timeout on the floor, it will be Princeton basketball when we return. A five-point game. Kitty airing it out to Paige to make it real interesting here down the stretch. Back here inside Levian Gymnasium with under four minutes to go. A five-point game in favor of Columbia. 
Lions led by 11 with just over five minutes to go. It is now an 8-2 run for Princeton. And they have the basketball as it was last touched by Columbia on the last possession. Shia back in the game with Chen, St. Rose, Nwekeng, and Mitchell. Princeton has hit its last five field goal attempts. They go inside to Nweke. Eight on the shot clock. Backing her way down on Fliss. Turns, fires, short. And then a whistle as they both went for the loose ball. They're gonna get Susie Raffu with the personal and that is gonna be her fifth and final foul. Fliss doing a decent job and then getting in the arm wrestling match. So easy to do with Ellie Mitchell, who oftentimes we use the word slippery for guards, but Ellie Mitchell is slippery just because she's got such a high motor. Susie was going for a wrestling move there on Ellie Mitchell. Shen, the double clutch, can't get it to roll. Mitchell tied up on the floor with Fliss. It's a jump ball and the possession arrow heads back to Columbia. Okay. Caitlin Chen here driving baseline, coming to those two feet. She's so good, the double clutch. She's had, she struggled from the, from the floor today, not because of lack of will, but being able to finish consistently, only shooting five for 17 tonight. Princeton is gonna go back and look at this film, and they're gonna play the coulda, woulda, shoulda game with so many close buckets around the rim. Three minutes to go. Columbia trying to tie Princeton for first place in the Ivy League standings. It parts like the Red Sea and Kitty can't get the roll. There's lids on these rims on both ends. Talk about wanting a bucket back. Lance. St. Rose pushes it up. Grabs the loose ball, it bounces to Noweke. And Paige comes in to rip it away and then a jump ball and the possession arrow is in favor now of Princeton and the Columbia faithful given an earful to Pastor Torres. The crowd wants a foul, obviously, but the persistence here by both squads. And Perry Page. And then Mitchell has two hands I on the ball. I think that's a jump ball, that's a fine call. Shen stops in the lane, blocked by Fliss. Fliss going coast to coast. Tried to dump it inside to Page. St. Rose was there. It's a three on three break and Noeke wisely slows things down. St. Rose from Broadway. And Abby Shu with the rebound. Mitchell takes it away and then she has her shoulder hit the end line. So it will go back to Columbia. Lauren, what'd you think of that shot by St. Rose? And before you comment on that, as we see Mitchell trying to keep the ball alive, we'll see, are they gonna take a look at this? It doesn't appear they will as they're going to resume play, but St. Rose put up that elongated three on this last possession. I think that was probably an ill-advised shot and it will go in the category of woulda, coulda, shoulda. If we coulda had that possession back, could we have gotten a better shot? I think the answer was yes. Both teams are on scoring droughts of over two minutes. Princeton has missed its last six field goal attempts. And they're gonna call a violation as Columbia did not get it across the court 10 seconds. Not a call you see very often. It's Megan Griffith trying to call her team over. Princeton calling a timeout. And with that, we'll step aside. A five-point game with two minutes to go at Levy. <laughs> Princeton basketball out of the timeout. Shen sealed off. Princeton has missed its last six field goal attempts. Can Shen end it? Inside to Mitchell, triple teamed, and she floats it in to make it a three-point game. Columbia needs to keep their pace. They play better at pace. Columbia has not scored in nearly three minutes. It's a 10-2 run by the Tigers. Kitty picked up by Noeke. 
Stevens now takes over with seven. Bounces it to Page, goes up, Mitchell blocks her, and we're gonna get a jump ball. Possession arrow will go to Princeton, will go to Columbia, excuse me, as we take another look here. Nice find by Nicole Stevens. Nice jump ball or block shot. Man, there's three on the shot clock here. So Kitty tries to lob it to her sister into no woman's land, and Collins picks it up off the deflection, but clearly a shot clock violation and another costly turnover. So that's back-to-back -back possessions that Columbia was unaware of the shot clock or inability to capitalize on the short shot clock. And these, Martin, are the things that plagued Columbia down the stretch of the first matchup last month when Princeton went on a late 16 to two run to pull away. They went cold from the field and they turned the ball over three times. Princeton has a chance to tie with a three. St. Rose to put the knot. Belker tips it out to Chin. Leans in with the left hand, can't get it to roll. Noweke the put back, she gets it. It's a one point game with under a minute to go and Columbia will utilize a timeout. Princeton on a 12-2 run. Here's another look. Shen first, the ring around the Rosie. Noweke off the deflection and by the chinny chin chin, it falls in and Princeton has stormed back with 52.8 seconds to go. Marin's second chance points, 11 to three in favor of the Tigers. Princeton has 18 offensive rebounds. Yes, some turn into points, but the physicality, the mental component that comes in with giving up yet another offensive rebound, those wear on a team. Columbia led this game 64 to 53 with 5.17 to go. A 12-2 run by Princeton in the last four plus minutes. Columbia basketball trying to hold on to a one point lead. There's been some big possessions here in Levian, but this is one of the top. Stevens with 15. They go to Fliss, draws the double. Out to Stevens, eight to go on the shot clock. Loses the ball, Fliss picks it up. Four, the awkward floater no good, but she was fouled. And they're gonna get the personal against Chetnoweke. That'll be her first. You see Fliss Henderson looking for the pass the entire time, looking for the pass, looking for the pass because that's the type of player that she is. And Fliss Henderson, a 67% free throw shooter, comes through with her first attempt today. In and out. Mitchell the rebound. It's a two point game. And the Tigers now will take the opportunity to talk things over. Columbia's eight of 11 from the free throw line. Princeton, 10 of 11. As we take a look at the upcoming schedule, Columbia on the road for the remainder. Brown, Yale, Cornell is their final home regular season game. Of course, they'll be back here for Ivy Madness. Princeton will be the opposite at home. Harvard, Dartmouth, and Penn. So, Marin, you're Carla Barubi. It's been an uphill battle, but the offense has been able to rely on second chance opportunities. What are you looking for on this possession? I think you are looking to get it, the clock down to seven or eight seconds. Caitlin Chen's going attacking. She's a smart player, great at distributing, also can finish versus contact, has that floater, I think, Caitlin Chen is taking your last shot unless she has a dump down to Ellie Mitchell or an outside pass to Madison St. Rose. And then watch Chet Nowacki on the offensive rebound. Chet Nowacki in this game, 17 points, six rebounds. 
The 17 points is one shy of her career high. She's one of three players to score in double figures for Princeton. It's St. Rose, Noweke, Shen, Mitchell, and Belker, the five in for Princeton. It will be Belker to inbound right in front of her own bench with the shot clock off. Shen is just five of 19 from the field in this game. But she's got eight assists and four rebounds. They milk the clock. 10 seconds to go. Shen on the move with four. The fadeaway jumper, air ball. Noweke had it, loses it. Mitchell's on the ground. The clock expires. And that is going to do it. Columbia has found the antidote to their kryptonite after losing 28 of 29 to the Tigers. They solved the riddle on their home floor. 67-65 in favor of Columbia. Now, each team is hesitant to shake hands, and finally, we get closure. Wow, Lance, wow. We knew it was gonna come down to a final shot. No surprise that it is Caitlin Chen doing Caitlin Chen things. Nicole Stevens gets her hand in there. Ellie Mitchell as well. What a finish for Columbia. Cecilia Collins taking it all in as the Lions have snapped Princeton's 24 game winning streak in Ivy League play. 67-65 the final here in New York City.